All right, what is going on, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of 100 Yards in Context. I'm joined with some of my greatest homies in the entire scouting universe. I got Cam with me, a uh, scout here at Fumis Art, and I got Dalen with me, scout from Fumis Art as well. How are you gentlemen doing tonight? Shit, we live in life, bro. We live in life. Smooth, take a plan, take a plan. Yeah, man. Draft season is starting to turn the wheels. The wheels are slowly turning here. Uh, They had like that little, I don't know if y'all seen, they had that little senior bowl underclassman reveal. And we found out like a bunch of like talented underclassmen about being senior bowl. Now, like James, Wood, not James Williams, uh, his teammate Cam Kitchens from Miami's going. Jackson Powers uh, Johnson is going. Uh, Kalen King, uh, cornerback from Penn State, is going. It's like a lot of talent that um is going into, you know, the senior ball, mixing with the seniors, the junior seniors mixing together. So, I guess my first question for y'all is like, how do y'all feel about you know the senior ball and Shrine ball being opened up to the underclassmen? Yeah, I definitely I rock with it. I mean, I rock with it. I honestly I don't I don't hate it not one bit. Like I said, I mean, most seniors go there to improve their stock. You might as well let you know, the younger classmen do the same thing. I mean, you have players coming in like um, like Kalen King. Um, you know, he came in, he was highly touted, didn't have the year exactly that he wanted to have, but not a hor- not a horrible year. He didn't have a terrible year, but again, he wasn't he probably got surpassed by guys like um like Quinny Mitchell, TJ Tampa, Kamari Lasseter, like he got surpassed by those guys. But, you know, the senior bowl gives him another opportunity to show like, hey, maybe I can go early round two, maybe I can sneak back into round one talks like you know, it, it allows them to rebound after having maybe the year that they don't that they don't like, and I I, I like it. Uh, and I, honestly, at first I was kind of like ah, I don't know how I feel about it, but at the end of the day, iron sharpens iron. So these if, if, if it helps them get better and improve draft stock, can't do nothing but respect it. I mean, I I want these guys to get drafted in the best situations possible, and. Being able to showcase your talent in um in games like this, it's one of the best and easy ways to do it. So, oh my God, please draft these brothers to the best situation possible. Stairs uh, and Bryce Young, Stairs and Bryce Young. Nah, man, what do you mean? He was so good at that. You know, he was so good. My wife loved him. I had to draft him. <laughs> <laughs> my wife loved him. I had to draft him. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think the Bryce I think the Bryce thing is a really good direction to go. Like, is Frank Reich so, How dare you? <laughs> I mean, you Why you, you honestly, draft that you CJ honestly, Stroud guy? Because hmm? <laughs> because like w- w- the podcast didn't exist back in when uh, those prospects were coming out, but like it was like saying like you know Bryce is CJ CJ or Bryce and. While I am very, very impressed with what CJ Stroud has done this year, I don't think it's still like I don't think it's like oh CJ Stroud was clearly better than Bryce. I think if you flip the situations, like Bryce in Houston has similar success to CJ, and I think if you put CJ in Carolina, probably some of the same struggles because Carolina's infrastructure of their offense was just terrible this year, like bad offensive line, bad young offensive line at that. Um, no skill, no skill players outside of an old man, Adam Thielen. So it's like, how do you guys feel about that whole Bryce Young and CJ Stroud dynamic? Because it's like, it's like every time CJ Stroud makes an excellent throw, it's like they want to say, see, that's why the Panthers should have took CJ Stroud. So how do y'all feel about that? I mean, to I be fair, to be fair, it's, it's, it's going to be like that. Like, it's, it's going to be like that. That's, that's just how it is. Um, Lamar, I mean, granted, he's pretty much surpassed everybody in his draft class, but they always was trying to compare, um, Lamar and Patrick early in their careers, but then Patrick got the two rings, so it kind of was like, ah, um, you know, back in, back in, uh, 04, Big Ben, Eli, and Phillip came in the league at the same time, um, even more recent, you had what was that? There was another draft with five QBs recently. Trey, what are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> 2021? 
Trevor Lawrence. I thought there was another one before that one. Twenty twenty. Twenty twenty had four, right? Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, them all in the same draft class. Nineteen is it was Burrow and like Kyler. Was- Unless you're trying to compare Daniel Jones and Dwayne Haskins, R.I.P. Dwayne Haskins. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, Haskins. never mind. I, I think I yeah, the one the first one y'all said. I mean, Trevor Lawrence and <laughs> Justin Fields. I mean, they was already compared to each other off the top already because ah, they're, they're both from the Georgia. For years they exactly. Been. They're both yeah. from Georgia. Trevor Lawrence was the number one um quarterback recruit for pretty much majority of his run. And then next, you know, senior year, at least according to ESPN, senior year it changed. All of a sudden, Justin Fields comes out of nowhere. He the number one ranked QB. So, to be fair, stuff like that is it's always going to happen that way. And it's not like it's just with quarterbacks. It happens with other positions as well. I mean, shit. Huh. Eagles fans know huh. Jalen Reg over, <laughs> over, over, over Justin Jefferson. That's a that's some shit you won't forget. And even even with players that don't play the same position, because me. I'll be looking at, hopefully, you know, hopefully he, he heals up because that is a crazy injury. I did the same thing with, I wanted Calvin Ridley um, in that draft, but we took Hayden Hurst. But then, even on the same draft, going back to the same position, we took Mark Andrews in the third round. And he's, you know, he's way better than Hayden Hurst. So that's just something that's always going to happen. Now, the situation is kind of unique because we can't really both sit here and act like they like both of them really didn't have no crazy talent. Now Nico Collins obviously was was showing that hey, hey Nico Wallace the one season. Oh God, yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all slept on me. Y'all yeah, slept on me. An outstanding I'm, year. I'm very happy and always glad to see a player step up and be able to show their worth. And he's doing that. But yeah, Bryce besides Adam Thielen and he still got him a thousand yards. He didn't really have nobody else. I mean, we all saw the Jonathan Mingo catch, right? Like, what? W- w- why? Get- so, I'm just pro. We got to get weapons for – you got to get weapons for all your QBs. I mean, look at Patrick Mahomes. He's struggling man, without weapons. Man, I'm tired of that whole debate of people, certain particular quarterback and weapon. Bro, no. every single quarterback. Everybody needs quarterback weapons. Quarterback not need a weapon. Absolutely. Yep. Hey, man, I'm... had Marvin Harrison, Reggie Wayne, uh, Dallas Clark. Like, come on, bro. Andrew and James in the backfield. Like, and was, when, when he went to Denver, he had Demarius Thomas. Like, like, what are we doing? What are we Julius doing, bro? Tom Brady, Tom, Brady had, had, Tom Brady had Gronk. He had that. He had old man uh, Randy Moss. I mean, you know, he had some weapons. I mean, granted, Tom probably the only one that I say like made his weapons better in terms of life. Yeah, like, like, but Edelman is not a Hall of Famer. Chris Hogan. Damn good receiver, Wes Welker. Wes damn Walker. good receiver. You know, um, he who shall not be named. The other tight end. You know, he he huh. he had a he had a good hey, run too. Rest in peace to him too, though. Rest in peace to him too. Nah, that's uh, <laughs> that. But but you know, like every quarterback needs weapons, and I'm sick of this narrative that oh well, look at so and so. No. You're like you're all a bad season from seeing. <laughs> <laughs> like you're all just one season from seeing. All right, I'll get him some help, and then nobody's gonna feel bad for you. I mean, because I had to do that because people were just like, "Oh, Lamar's not that guy." When we had Willie Sneed, bro, what and you Deshaun mean, what Jackson's you, what carcass, thirty-six year old Deshaun Jackson wasn't enough. And I mean, oh my god, so. Ah. <laughs> uh, so please, let's please end this narrative. Every quarterback needs weapons. Every and single quarterback absolutely needs weapons. I, I, and shit, look before he got hurt. Look what the Texans did. They drafted their highly touted quarterback. That quarterback and said. That quarterback said, "I want him." They got it. exactly. They they went to him and asked, "Hey, is there any weapon you want us to go get?" He said, "I want Tank Dell," and they got Tank Dell. Hopefully, he heals up too. But. That I, hopefully that is something we see. That is a that is something that is a tradition that starts to just keep happening into the league. Because I, obviously, have y'all noticed with these last couple of years, some of these quarterbacks have been reuniting with their teammate college wide receivers and stuff like that. Yes, keep doing stuff like that. Keep the chemistry up. That's that's what you want to do. Yeah, keep the chemistry. Keep the. I mean, 
quarterback says he wants a particular weapon because he feels like he can do this for the offense. I feel like again, a quarterback's input on the offense is is like number one. Literally, it, it just it should be number one. If a quarterback doesn't like a particular throw, don't get a receiver that like is good at at that part. Like the whole okay, like the whole Bryce thing. Like okay, Bryce when Bryce Bryce can probably do it and he'll develop into doing it, but he's not very effective when it comes to attacking outside the numbers. Jonathan Mingo is outside the numbers machine. It just it 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 never was made to mesh well. That's why Thielen got a whole bunch of because Thielen's can do the slot things, the underneath things, and that's that's what Bryce did. And that's why they were, you know, that's why, that's why, you know, he, he targeted Jameer Gibbs a lot. Um, you know, when they had Jamison Williams, now he was targeting deep across the middle of the field. Like, if we if we allow like the quarterbacks to, you know, play to their strengths first and then we can develop their weaknesses, then that's when we can get a complete product. We don't need to come in and make Bryce Young be Peyton Manning. He ain't gonna be Peyton Manning to to start off. We can't we can have those expectations. Oh God, yeah, literally. I mean, I said it in the other Sunday. Uh, no, not Sunday's part. I think it was in the, the last draft podcast. I feel bad for these quarterbacks coming out this year because oh they're they're all gonna get hit with the. Well, CJ Stroud did it. Why can't he do it? Man, like, <laughs> it's gonna be. Man, it's like, oh my god, and there's please. some nasty ass. I, that's what I'm saying. Please. There's nasty ass narratives. Oh, it's gonna I don't want to, I don't want to, and this is not any hate on CJ Stroud because I really like the way he played this year, but I really am interested to see what happens next year because, like, if it's they lose, like it. no, 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 I mean, oh. obviously, yeah, that'd be interesting, but I'm more curious to see what the narrative is if he has like you know a sophomore slump because people are really putting him up on this pedestal right now and he absolutely deserves it like it's nothing it's it's oh, yeah, nothing seeing, to take I'm away from top him. five already yeah but top <laughs> five like they're saying like like you know the the people that we're not gonna name the media people they're saying you know other than Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson I'm taking every quarterback in the playoff field um I'm taking CJ Stroud over every quarterback in the playoff field. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like, you know, you can give someone praise, but you don't have to, you don't have to put someone up on a pedestal, you know, after, you know, 15 games of ball. But back to Bryce, though, I, I do want to, I did want to get this kind of off. Like, I also think part of the problem was when you do draft someone, and you specifically, like, when you trade up for them, right, you have to have a plan in place to where, okay, we're trading up for this guy. We've, we've got to use the rest of our assets to, you know, allocate for that. While I like the Jonathan Mingo pick, I really agree with what Dalen said. Like, I don't think Jonathan Mingo as a wide receiver really matched what Bryce does well. And sometimes, you know, the quarterback has to suck it up, right? You have to suck it up. The quarterback might be, you know, a dynamic X, uh boundary receiver Alonzo by himself or you know a really really good slot gadget type player but with Mingo it was like Mingo was an okay route runner old Miss he did a lot of his work um after the catch you know um outside the numbers so for me it's like to draft that to draft that receiver in the second round it kind of let me kind of showed me now that I'm thinking about it in hindsight it's kind of like okay they didn't really have a plan they just said okay where's he going to get Bryce a weapon and not the best weapon for Bryce basically yeah. like and that that's that's a recipe for disaster because it's like when you're when you're trying to build around a young quarterback it's almost like think of puzzle pieces puzzle pieces fit together some pieces fit some pieces don't it's not always you know every 64 wide receiver works with you know every quarterback you know some quarterbacks don't like throwing 50-50 balls some quarterbacks can't throw back short balls. You know what I'm saying? So I, I really hope that, you know, Carolina gets, you know, everything straightened out for that kid because he's too talented to look the way he looked this year. But at the same time, people also have to understand this was a rookie quarterback. And it's not to make an excuse, but most rookie years look like that. You're you're getting confused by defensive schemes. I mean, the first the first game that he had against Atlanta, Jesse Bates picked him off twice with the same coverage. So, 
you know, an elite, so, an elite safety too. That is an elite safety. He's yeah, been an elite safety. Like, he was shit. fading okay. him the whole time, Dalen. He threw it to him twice. I mean, he's he's first, first team all Jesse pro. Jesse Bates ain't nothing to play with though. Exactly, all he's pro. He's not. <laughs> Jesse Bates is a dog. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, he, he definitely played, the, and that's what happens. You know, you're a rookie. You deal with vets. Vets can get over on you in that rookie year, and hopefully, and we mean hopefully, you know, you learn from your mistakes. That's what a that's what a good play, not just player, but anybody. You got to learn from your mistakes. Sure. Actually, touching back again on the on the weapons and fit and everything. Should have another mm-hmm. good example. Kyler. Why is Kyler throwing the throwing the weapons that are just as short as him? Why? Why? Yeah, why that's something that we have to talk about. Yeah, yeah Michael yeah, Wilson Rondell is like Moore the pick. Can we talk? Right. Can we be honest about Rondell Moore? Can we be honest? Like, is is Rondell Moore? And, and I'm not a I'm not a is he a bust guy, so I'm not going to ask that. But is Rondell Moore, you know, living up to the expectations of his draft selection? They didn't have a plan because for him either. They didn't have I'm, a plan for him. I'm going to be honest, like, yeah, even with the not having a plan for him, it's almost like, you know, they drafted Rondell Moore, and granted, when they drafted him, you know, was it COVID year, Dale, or was it 21? I don't remember. I mean, uh, basically, COVID year, COVID year. Yeah, so he, he, he had been dealing with some injuries in Purdue or whatever. But, like, other than that, like, outside of, you know, some splash plays here and there, he's almost been a non-factor in their offense since, they, they since his career they started. Kinda just, they kind of just drafted him. They kinda, it feels like they watched the tape. They say, ooh, dynamic player, drafted him and just didn't have a real plan for him. Like, and then they found Greg yeah. Dorch immediately, too. Yeah, yeah so and they found like... Greg Dorch and – Mm-hmm. And oh, then they get Hollywood, and then yep, the now you get Michael Hollywood. Wilson, who I you know I think that'll do Kyler some good because you know Mike he's he's like six one six two. Yeah, 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 pretty, yeah, yeah. Michael Wilson good. is good. I mean, he he loves targeting Trey McBride, another big body yeah. target. Like, and he's an athletic freak. But yeah, I, yeah. I think going back, yeah, they just didn't have a plan for him because that's a Cliff Kingsbury pick. He just like oh. Super explosive guy, give him to me. And, and, and it happens a lot. You don't know what to do. With nothing. It. It's kind of like <laughs> it's like the cave on Austin shit. It's like super explosive guy, get him to me. And then you don't know, you what, don't to do know what to do with him. We don't know what to do. He's like, all right, should we line him up in the backfield? Uh, uh, should we put him in a slot? Uh, uh, or maybe we could put him like you didn't have a plan for him. You were just ah, like, right, he's explosive. We'll figure it out. And then it's, kind of, it's kind of one of those, oh, he, you know, he's one of those, if we just get the ball in his hands, magic happens. It's like, okay, that right. can happen. But, like, in the league, he, 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 that don't happen very often in the league. Like, it, it, as it's saying, not unless point. you have some special, like, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle type trait where you're just, like, blazing fast every time you touch the ball. But, nah, it's just, it ain't easy. It ain't easy. It's almost to the point, too, as well, guys, where it's like when – when Rondell works on the field, defenses are no okay. Something might be off. But do some. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't they even like use him player. as a. Exactly. That's what I was. That's what I was really trying to say. Like, why do teams draft these players that are super explosive, super talented, and turn them into specialty players, like gadget players? Like I, I, I don't, I don't understand. What is the point of taking a player? As explosive as a Rondell Moore, that's just one example. I can give you a thousand. And then limiting their role to the point where it's like when def- when team when you put them on the field, defenses already know what's up. Like, oh, uh, be alert for a reverse. Oh, he's in the backfield. Be alert for a little handoff. Be alert for a little uh little trap screen right there. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's, it's just baffling to me. I mean, the it's best gadget the, the best gadget player probably of all time right now is. It's probably Taysom Hill. I ain't gonna lie. He's probably gonna go down as one of the best gadget players of all time. That's different though, cause but that's what I'm saying. They, they know the how to actually, yeah, exactly. They know how to use him. They line him up at tight end. They can line him up in the backfield. He can go well, backfield whether he's halfback or he's a uh, or he's at QB. So it, he might have been in the slot at times too. I mean, he they know how to yeah. use him. Exactly. It, it it just adds a different variable to it. But yeah. I, if if Clint, if Cliff Kingsbury, who's supposed to be an offensive, supposed to be an offensive guru, and let's be honest, Texas Tech, I knew for a while, like Texas Tech and Washington State to me, they're like the same place. I mean, obviously they normally run air raid, but too, 
for whatever reason, except for like one year where they had like no receiver shorter than six three. <laughs> Majority of the times, they normally have midget receivers. I don't know what it is. Them in Washington mm. State, kings of that. Oh yeah, don't worry. We got this this monster right here, five seven. Do something about it. And it's just like, <laughs> yeah, he's a good football player, but like, do something with him. Yeah. Ah, like do something. Like, yeah. I uh, no. mean, shit. Half the battle is half the battle is drafting. The other half is fucking developing. And these teams, they just suck at developing Ooh, players. That's a literally one, me. Me like me and Daily used to talk about this all the time, even before I got on here. We I used to literally send each other ten minute long Snapchats about like, bro, why are they doing this? Why are they doing that? <laughs> why are they making this decision? Or we just be like, we like fans gotta understand like there's certain shit you can't control. And I do what you be doing. Let's go. We should, hey, I played. I, I, literally, <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, bro, so confused. Tell me, <laughs> prospects from the 2024 class um, that participated in you know college football playoff. So for you guys, let's just let's just let me just ask like. Give me one player that you were extremely pressed w- impressed with from the playoff, and give me a player that you were extremely disappointed in that um will be draft eligible this season. Well, shit. I mean, honestly, I had no expectations for him anyway. But Texas fans, I know we're all disappointed in fucking Quinn Ewers. Just it's okay. It's okay. He's a draft prospect. No, I was just, uh, it was just saying. I, I, I oh. you, you you asked the question. I'm I'm just giving an answer. Look, I'm the most disappointed at Quinn Ewers because Buddy started 0 for 4 with three tip passes. Started the game 0 for 4 with three tip passes. Fire. <laughs> hey, can't, can't, can't write it up any I would, better. I would be, I'll be lying if I said I was surprised. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. Well, unfortunately, it's just it's not really surprising that Quinn Ewers stinks because, yeah, he stinks. Um... Shit, I mean, I'm honestly, I mean, I'm impressed with a lot of prospects to be honest. If we're, if we be, yeah, we're being honest. Oh. I mean, I ain't gonna lie. Uh, there was one. Now, granted, only because I had a little bit higher expectations and I haven't fully got to finish watching his tape yet. I definitely wanted to see. I definitely thought I was gonna see more out of uh, Braylon Trice. I knew you were gonna say that. Definitely. Like as as because like during I've been watching Washington throughout the season, but obviously you want to see these guys against like a, I mean Michigan's known for putting out offensive linemen, mm-hmm. so you want to see how he handles, you know, other top tier talent, and you know, it happens sometimes. You don't have your best night. I, I mean, but I definitely expected a little bit more out of him. Yeah. Um. And then you said one I was excited for? No, like just impressed with, like, you know, oh. a prospect you were disappointed in, a prospect you were impressed with. Hey, I mean, um, shit. Donovan Edwards bought his ass off and fucking. I was going to say, yeah, I might have to give it to uh, Donovan Edwards. Yeah, he, he bought out. Yeah, I got to give it to him. First touch, basically, first two touches went long distance end zone. Literally. Shit. He said, I put the team yeah. on my back day. Like, <laughs> he was not playing. And yeah. Corm one didn't shit. And then Edward said, nah, I got it. He said, don't worry about it, OG. Uh, Man, Corm, I'll right take care Corm. of it, little bro. <laughs> sounds Corm. about right with Corm. Corm. Corm popped up late, but nah. Edwards early on, he was, he was dog. He was just dog. Yeah, Edwards is Edwards is a very explosive back. Um, For me, uh, the prospect I was most um disappointed in was... Absolutely, um, Xavier Worthy. I thought that Xavier Worthy would, you know, stretch the field more against Texas. Now, I know that's tied to the quarterback play because Quinn Ewers is terrible. But, you know, Xavier Worthy's basically had the same problem in his entire career, which is drop passes. It was there before Quinn Ewers, and it was there after. And all year, 
Xavier Worthy, despite the bad passes or whatever from Quentin Ewers, he was still having the same drop problem. And in that Texas Washington game, there were just so many more opportunities that Texas could have had if, you know, Worthy came down with the ball. So I was very disappointed in him. Um, I was very impressed with, uh, like you guys said, Donovan Edwards. But I also liked a lot of what I saw from Trevor Keegan, the offensive lineman from Michigan. I thought the job that he did in opening up those lanes for uh, Donovan Edwards and for uh, Blake Corum was just fantastic. I think he's going to the senior bowl as well. Uh, so I'm excited to see more of him. So, yeah. A uh, lot of, I know who lot of... I was impressed with now. I'm... Now it's not just one player. That 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 whole that whole front line, specifically them D tackles from Michigan in that national championship game, I liked what they was doing. Hey, Chris Jenkins yeah. stunting like his daddy. Stunting yeah. like his goddamn daddy. Yeah, yeah. It was Yeah. They was not making life easy for uh, Michael Penix back there. Oh my god, no. Yeah, Jeez. we were I was gonna I was gonna ask about that next because yeah. Um I don't think I was disappointed in Michael Penix, but I will say that most of what I thought about Michael Penix before the college football playoff, I still believe now. Like, is Michael Penix one of the best deep ball throwers in the class? Yeah. Is Michael Penix, you know, a quarterback that, despite his injury history, has overcome a lot? Yeah. But does Michael Penix throw well versus pressure? No. Does Michael Penix throw well on the move? No. Can you rattle Michael Penix by just getting some hits on him, getting some pressure on him? Yeah, so it's kind of one of those things to where it's like, with Michael Penix, when I watch him, it's like, oh, he's just like, ah, it's like I'm this close to like full on jumping on him and having that crush on him like I have for some of the other, other quarterbacks in this class. But, you know, it's just, he just leaves you with more to be desired. And it's crazy because. Out of all the quarterbacks in this class, he probably had the best weapons. I mean, Roma Dunza, Jalen Polk, Jalen McMillan for when he came back that part of the year. You're not going to find a trio of weapons better in college football this past season. So to have all that is – it makes the evil easier. But at the same time, it's like for, for Penix's to, to sake, my just question is it's like, you know, are you like that Cam conversation? Like, are you a game changer or are you a game manager? And not in the sense of where, because I don't, I don't really care about that. But it's more like, are you like a quarterback that can come into like a franchise and like you know make difference, or are you a quarterback that can be a difference? You know what I'm saying? Like, I wonder that because you know we've had conversations and you know where Penix could go. And, you know, obviously, you know, first round bump because quarterback or whatever, but I could see Michael Penix lasting until the middle of the second round. You know, if the medicals don't come back right or, uh, you know, he has a sub performance at the combine or whatever. So it's going to be interesting to see, you know, what his draft stock looks like going forward for the next uh, couple months because that last performance against, you know, Michigan, it just, it's gonna. It could potentially leave you know a lot of people you know with some question marks. But you know, I try not to be a prisoner at the moment anymore. That's something I've learned as a scout. Where it's like you know, one game doesn't define a player, good or bad. But it's just that that specific specific game against Michigan, like you know the 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 weaknesses that I had on my report for summer scouting, they just kept showing up over and over and over. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't, like I said, no, yeah, he did, he didn't have a great performance, but in my opinion, yeah, his, his medicals is going to determine where he's going to get drafted. I think they're going to, I think they're definitely going to weigh on that a lot more than anything else tangible wise. They're, they're just worried about the medicals. Because they don't have questions on character. They don't have questions on his ability. It's literally just medicals. Yeah, at this point, I think he's, he's I think, about two catastrophic knee injuries. Uh, I think he had a bad shoulder injury, yeah, bad too. Shoulder injury. Was it throwing shoulder or was it non-throwing? I think it was throwing. That's very important. Throwing shoulder. Oof. 
And he, I mean, he, he are, even got he banged up leaving the game. This uh against Michigan. Yeah, because he, he was getting beat up. He, I mean, he's he's yeah, all, he was he, holding his ribs, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, yeah, he's he already he, beat he's up. already an older prospect too. He's already I think he's twenty four years old. I mean, it just it, it doesn't bode well for teams already looking for quarterbacks. I mean, sure, he he he'll still be highly touted. I, I feel, but I mean, him being an older prospect and with the medical history, it could it, he might not go till day three. Oof, the player, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kind of, see, 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 that's the, or was um. Neighbors. But I had I had that in my head going. Yeah, here's, that my, here's my, here's my... It's messed up. draft results. Good tackles no more. Cause I... no. I mean he did, but TJ Watt had 19. You cannot get cute in the end. All right. So, so the final draft order for at least the playoffs, the non-playoff teams came out over the end of the regular season. So. Uh, Chicago Bears have the first pick. Uh, Washington Commanders have the second pick. New England Patriots have the third. Arizona Cardinals have the fourth. Los Angeles Chargers, rest in peace, Killer Moore, have the fifth pick. Um, New York Giants have the sixth pick. Tennessee Titans have the seventh. Arizona, not Arizona, I'm sorry. Atlanta Falcons have the eighth pick. Chicago again. Bears have their... Again. 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 Chicago Bears have their ninth pick. Um. New York Jets have the 10th pick. Minnesota Vikings have the 11th. Denver Broncos, 12. Las Vegas Raiders, 13. New Orleans Saints, 14. Indianapolis Colts, 15. Seattle Seahawks, 16. Jacksonville Jaguars, 17. And the Cincinnati Bengals have the 18th pick. Before we get into, because we did a mock draft, we're about to unveil in a second. But before we get to that, um, which team out of this team that missed the playoffs uh, do you think has the best chance to rebound and um, re- reemerge uh, next year and why? Hmm. Damn, that's a good question. For me, uh, I'm going to go to yeah. Jets. 100% agree. That's what I was going to say, too. Their, de- their defense was still elite. <laughs> like, it was, it was elite again. It was elite again. It was... It was top three, I think. Like it was the lead again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. And and I know people are still are sleeping on him still, but they're finna get an elite quarterback back next year. So my pick was 100 percent of Jets. Yeah, it's it's not even because like had it had it not been them, I mean I probably I probably would have said the ops, but other than that. Yeah, I'm a, I'd have to go with them because they just. I can see an argument for Indy as well. They went nine and eight true. without Anthony Richardson. I mean, yeah, yeah, that is true, and he he showed great promise too. Well, honestly, probably. Yeah. I mean, I would probably lean more Indy, but if I wanted to go with like a sleeper one, I mean, Chicago's got a good chance of rebounding. I mean. They can go in multiple yeah, that directions. That defense is really good too. They, they yeah. go to multiple different directions with the number one overall pick. Um, Black Sam Presti. Yeah, I'm just, <laughs> they, they, they can do whatever they want with one. There and plus, I guess hey, Sweat made a difference on the defense. I mean, he he absolutely did. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Shoot, that they, the, they, defense, they the defense at the man. the defense at the back end of the year, I think, was top ten. They were talking, yeah. and Jalen yeah. Johnson, he played amazing the whole year. That pay that man. Don't be stupid. Pay that man, please. Uh, <laughs> all right, gentlemen, it is time to unveil our mock draft 1.0 as an apartment here. Let's let's go ahead and get into it with who we had going first overall, and that was none other than the only guy, right, the, the player that should go. Now, who makes that pick? We'll see. But uh, Dalen made that pick, so I'm going to let Dalen talk about the prospect that Caleb Williams is and why he had him going to Chicago one overall. Uh, I mean, again, we're, you know, we did no trades in the mock, so uh, the Bears can do a multitude of things with it. They can keep fields. They can trade the pick. They can honestly just draft Marvin Harrison right there. Um, In this scenario, I just had them I assume, you know, hey, we'll just we'll get off a of field. We'll get probably 
probably uh, you know a conditional day two pick. Uh, probably another, probably two picks, probably two day two picks for Fields. Uh, get started with brand new with a rookie with a rookie quarterback, uh, rookie contract. You still have DJ Moore. They still have pick. Uh, what is it nine or ten? Mm-hmm. It's nine. It's nine. Good. So they have pick nine still. They can they can take another offensive weapon if they want to. They can take an edge. They can they can do whatever they want with that pick in my opinion. But yeah, might as well. I mean, a lot of times these teams are trying to win with rookie quarterbacks, especially since the 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 QB market is atrocious. <laughs> Since he's a premier prospect, I'll ask uh, your opinion on this daily because I have my thoughts on Caleb, and they'll be broadcasted plenty of times here on this pod. But in your opinion, what is the thing about Caleb Williams that makes him special to you? Or what's the thing that you like about him, a trait that you like about him, a, a ability you like about him, or a characteristic of his play that you like about him that really just makes you just enamored with him as a player? I mean, I mean – you know, to, to to bring up the memes, you know, he he look a little Mahomey, but uh, in uh, you know, like in those pressure situations, in the like in those pressure situations, off script, he he he's he controls everything. He makes it look normal. He makes it look easy. And in the league, that's how it's gonna be. You're gonna get pressure in your face probably in about two and a half seconds. So you gotta. Let's say play action, play fake. You got to turn your back to defense, turn around, find the safety while also having these 300 pound men chase you to death. It's the fact that he stays cool, calm and collected under pressure and just he knows how to control everything. He knows what's going on. And I mean, that's fantastic. If you're already coming into the league, basically at a good to great level at that, let alone at Caleb's level, which is fantastic. I mean, I, I really don't see a reason why you shouldn't work in the league, in my opinion. Couldn't agree more. With our second pick, we had um, Cam taking his favorite quarterback in this entire class, Drake May, to the Washington Commanders. Oh, see, like another one, like we said, well, because they, they they were four for the um, majority part of the year, right? And then they they finally sucked some more and got to the second overall pick. But I believe Tankathon had them losing eight straight, so. They were yeah, definitely yeah. just yeah, they lost pretty nice. Nice. They were definitely just like, you know what, fuck this shit. Like <laughs> Uh again, well uh, we don't gotta keep harping on it. Like you said, it's it's no trade. So for them I just looked at it as I was like, Well, Drake May doesn't stop me from like I like Sam Howell, but Drake May does not stop me from drafting Sam Howell. He just he he doesn't. I like I like what Drake May can bring to the table. Now granted People go look at this and be like, well, are him and Sam Howell kind of similar? Yes and no. Like, obviously, yes, they're both mobile. They both have pretty damn good arms. But when it comes to Drake, he he's he's a lot more he's a lot more accurate where he wants to put his ball placement. And he showed that once he was able to pass the ball down the field once he got his number one receiver. And Obviously, him going into a situation like Washington, it's going to be a nice setup where you're going to have Dotson. Um, I don't know if Samuel will be back. I'm pretty sure he's a free agent. But you're going to have Scary Terry. That's a damn good situation to be put in as a rookie. And those are guys who will make sure they go go up and get that ball for you. And now, granted, the, the biggest thing for me, there's like, ah, it's a big what if. We don't know what's going to happen to um. What's his name? Uh, the OC. Um, you know I mean? I'm drawing the blank right now. Yeah, yeah. We don't know what's gonna happen with uh, B Enemy, but in my opinion, B Enemy did a he he did a he did a decent job with Sam Howell. Um, it's just a mix of Sam holds the ball too long, but also that Commander's O line is pretty bad. Hmm. Yes, that does worry me with Drake May. With me selecting Drake May, but at the same time, I think they'll do the best they can, especially in free agency. I don't know how much money they have, cap they have, but whoever whoever they can get, I'm sure they'll, they'll try their best to shore up that offensive line. So that's why I was high. I'm comfortable with taking uh, Drake May to go to the Washington Commanders. He is. Donna couldn't be with us tonight, but um. Set up, kid. I'm gonna go over his pick. <laughs> Shout out, Brenner. Uh, gonna Bro, be Smack Jones turning the ball. Gross. 
<laughs> Man, they gotta they gotta stone him. Stop it. <laughs> they are going to stone burn. They're gonna burn him at the stake and Salem all over again. <laughs> He's <laughs> stop it. So Murder couldn't be with us tonight, so I'm gonna be going over his picks. But this pick for in my opinion, speaking for Burner, is pretty obvious. Marvin Harrison Jr. had a case to go number one overall in our first mock. Like, I don't know how, because we haven't talked about it as a department, but I'm pretty sure Marvin Harrison Jr. isn't going to be any lower than three on our final, you know, big board rankings. Because this dude, from top to bottom, as a player, when you get off the bus, you just see a stud, right? 6'4", probably going to run like a 4'4 at the combine. Excellent route runner. You can line up anywhere. You can line him up as the boundary receiver. You can line him in the slot. You can line him up as the, as the um, Z receiver. He's just an absolute outstanding talent. And in the Wiggins case, you miss out on the quarterbacks. So what's the next best thing? You can figure out your quarterback situation maybe in the second round, and maybe you address it for agency. And you get literally the best, potentially the best player in the draft. Uh, sounds sounds like an excellent move to me. So. We have Marvin Harrison Jr. going to the New England Patriots. And now my pick. Uh, I have the Arizona Cardinals taking Olu Fashanu, the offensive tackle from Penn State. Um, Him, Joe Alt, best tackle in the class. You could really argue with your mom about that, too. It's like, whatever you want to do. Specifically, though, what I want to touch on on Joe Alt, I'm going to have a scouting report right here. Uh, really like the fact that he plays the game with that intensity, right? We were having a conversation uh, off air where, you know, the importance of O-line. I think there's different types of O-line. There's O-line that are more finesse. There's O-line that are more physical, more brute, more strong. And I think o- I think Olu Fashan is one of those linemen that when he's on the field, you feel his presence. You know what I'm saying? Like, and for a team like Arizona, who just now, you know, got Colin Murray back, who just now got in a situation where, you know, they, Colin Murray's secure, you know, Jonathan Gannon said, you know, that's our guy. You know, making that pick like Olu Fashano makes a ton of sense because it's, it's going to reinforce, you know, the fact that, you know, the commitment to Colin Murray was also going to give, you know, Colin Murray a chance to hit those play action shots to, you know, whatever receiver they get in for to see in the second round. Because if you're going to have time, you're going to have, you know, play calls like that where you want to get Collar in space and Collar up, uh, almost play action shots, you're going to need him to have protection. He's going to need to have time for that. So establishing, you know, your left side of the offensive line after you just took care of your right side offensive line last year at Paris Johnson just makes a ton of sense for the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, Dalen, uh, you had Malik Neighbors to the Chargers, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, only had two pathways. It was either... Going Malik Neighbors or going Joe Walt. Now, again, I, I, I do stress the importance of offensive line. But in this scenario, it's a little different because, I mean, the Chargers do need offensive line. I don't think it's, I don't think it's as bad of a need as, like, they just need a receiver because Quentin Johnston doesn't know how to play football. Uh, Mike Williams is always hurt. He's always hurt. And Kenan Allen is 33? Kenan Allen's like 33. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Speaking of unnecessary, let's talk about this pick, Cam, because you made uh, Jay yeah. Daniels go to oh, New York. Yeah, it is necessary. I'm, he didn't got I'm very, I'm very interested Super to necessary. See this. Super necessary. I'm very oh. interested to see this explanation. Very easy. Please. Um, Now, they ain't fired him, so I'm assuming they go give my boy another shot in Brian Dayball. Brian Dayball like him a mobile quarterback. That That is something that's... Stairs and Josh Allen. Yeah, like... Josh Allen had his best year when Brian well years when Brian Dayball was there. Jaden Daniels is even more mobile, gonna be faster. And he has pretty decent arm talent and accuracy. Now obviously they're more than likely gonna have to double back in that second round and get him more receiver talent because I don't know you why they to. came into the year thinking that Darren Waller was enough. Like I'm I'm sorry. I don't know you, why you, y'all you, did that. You you have to. I mean <sighs> At least Wandale something. At least Wandale something. He's he yeah. he more than a gadget guy. But yeah, yeah, he, he very yeah. he very much surprised me this year, especially in the, the year. He was playing very well. Yeah, he was playing very well at the end of the year. Yeah, yeah he he is. He definitely is. But in my opinion, I 
I think he would more he would lean more towards Daniels than he would towards a Michael Penix. Now I know you guys are saying, well, but Daniel Jones. No. What about him? Absolutely not. No. What about him? <laughs> All right, look. I would. What, I would what, I would understand that if they didn't just pay him though. And he's okay. come off an injury too. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Okay. But at the same time, Philly, it's like Philly, Philly did that with Jalen Hurts. They had they had paid Wayne. That was a second round. That was a second round. That pick. Doesn't, that and so guess wrong? what? He still he still got replaced. Sheesh. Get a job. <laughs> I mean, look. Listen, I, hey, I gotta listen, say, he listen, didn't get Gordon the film is hard. It's a cold world out there, man. You get paid one year. And the next year, after you tear ACL, you get replaced. It's cold. It's cold. Or... Yeah. All right, I'll be quick on Joel because there's not really much to talk about. Six eight three twenty two. Literally just at a film session on this dude. I mean, why not? Um, I mean, they, 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 they. Again, we had the offensive line discussion. Their offensive line was trash. Now, great, it wasn't even trash. Skronsky was pretty it. good for a rookie. Um, Nick Petit Frere was whatever. That's what but I like, thought about that left tackle. Uh, wasn't it Jalen Duncan? He was trash. He was terrible. He was awful. Horrible. Horrible. I, I think, think, I like think Joe Alt, seriously. I think move. Joe Alt and Peter Skaron should be a very good combination together. Like left oh, that's tackle, nasty. left guard. That's nasty. Like I think that I think that's perfect. Yeah, that's nasty. one of Joe Alt's biggest struggles is dealing with long tackles with leverage. Well. Peter Str- on a Peter Scaranti strength when he was the tackle was dealing with long arms and legs. He kicked Chase Young's ass. You know what I'm saying? So to have Peter Scaranti be able to help him out on the inside, I think that would be very good. And then honestly, Joe also one of those prospects to where it's like you're taking him and you plug him and play him right away. You don't really have any issues. You might have you might have some growing pains in certain places, but Joe is one of the top five best players in this class by far. So not really much to say there. We get here, we get to Atlanta, a team that doesn't have a coach right now, but has a lot of weapons um, on that offense, and I have them taking Michael Penix Jr. I would have taken Jaden Daniels, but somebody drafted him to New York. <laughs> so, yeah. Screw you, buddy. Um, but, nah, Jaden Daniels, Michael Penix, he's the quarterback works in Atlanta. I mean, whoever gets blessed with the ability to coach B. John Robinson, um, Kyle Pitch, Drake London. Uh, you know, they're they're gonna be, they're... Stop right now. No. <laughs> no. I knew he was going to say it. I will put, put an end to the Kadero Hodge, John U. Smith. No. Absolutely not. No. I promise you. Uh, Dalen had the Chicago Bears taking Dallas Turner. Uh, again, they get some more, uh, again, they can go anywhere with this pick. Um, I think since, the, especially since they kept Everfluss and, uh, the defense was already top 10, add you another nasty ass pass rusher with sweat. Um, oh, good Lord. Yeah. You got a sweat Dallas Turner duo. I mean, Jalen Johnson's out on the outside locking up. Tariq Stevenson had a, he had a, he had a good rookie year. He had a really good rookie year. Uh, Didn't he have those, 17 PBUs, bro? I think so. Something like that. He had a really good year. He had a really good year. Kyler Gordon in the slot. like Kyler Gordon yeah, in the slots, old, dominant. That's what I'm saying. They got their two safeties still. Brisker's a dog. Brisker's a dog. Man, I love yeah, him. He, Brisker. yeah, he, he, might be, he might be my he might be one of them. Hey, he, my favorite, he might be one of my favorite players in the league. I love watching Brisker play. He, he's amazing. But, I mean, really, again, they can go multiple the ways, but the draft is so deep. Um, They can, I mean, honestly, they uh, take take the edge rusher. And, and go ball out. <laughs> Take the edge rusher. Go make your defense elite, elite. Alana. Speaking of a Hall of Famer, go ahead and explain, Cam, your oh. your pick of the future Hall of Famer, to Too easy. Harden, and why right. you picked him over Raul Madunze. Go All ahead right, and say easy. Um, So, is Aaron Rodgers mobile? No. He's a pocket gonna, manipulator. You, you think it, He's a pocket manipulator. After after absolutely shredding his Achilles off the bone, absolutely. exactly. You think he's you think he's gonna be more mobile after his Achilles blew up? Come on, now, bro. <laughs> it's Aaron Rodgers. It's Aaron Rodgers. At forty years old. Aaron Rodgers can do anything. At Aaron Rodgers old? can do anything. Forty years old. <laughs> Come on now. Yes, I would have loved to have Rome playing on the opposite side of Garrett Wilson. That is. Oh boy. Oh my God, that would be a nightmare for DCs. 
but the Jets have a pretty clear offensive line issue, especially tackle. See, it all, um, it sucks when one of your tackles are turn is a turnstile. When both are turnstiles, oh my lord! Yeah, it's it's not a problem you can overlook with a non mobile QB. So that's why that's why I went there with this pick. Um, and that, that's really I'm gonna leave it at. I mean, shit, Brees Hall still almost had a thousand yards. So. With a guy, with getting a guy like this, to help Sharp off that edge. It's gonna help the run game more. Hopefully, you get more protection and more time for Aaron Rodgers to do Aaron Rodgers things. And hopefully, they make because they don't have a second round pick. They're gonna have to make a good signing in the um in the off season. They're um they're in the wide receiver free agency, or who knows, maybe they can get a stud in the third round. But as far as giving Aaron Rodgers time, you got to do that. It's a must. Got it's a must. Got to give him time to dissect the defense, which he can do. He's been playing. Really? Well, uh, our dog Burner. Oh, 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 oh next to oh, oh, oh. Ah, <laughs> the Minnesota Vikings. And I have the, uh, I have the curse of explaining this pick. No, I mean, no. I got it. I got it. But I'm not explaining it very well. Oh, you want to take it? Okay. Okay. I'm not explaining okay. it very no, well. Go ahead. Okay. I don't know who's throwing him the ball, but um, yeah. Romo dudes is a Viking. I don't know who's throwing him the ball. Nick Mullins, baby. But yeah, I, I don't know who's throwing him the ball. I mean, on paper, this looks good. Addison, Odunze, Jettas, Hawkinson. Like, you know, again, you got the two tackles. Like, that's a great pick. If you we have three interchangeable receivers, all of them can play in any spot on the field. Oh yeah, Russell Russell Wilson gonna go crazy. If, if you might as well get Russell Wilson <laughs> at this point. Like you gotta you you I don't know what else to do. Like Trey Lance let me, gonna let go me, stupid. Let me, let me let me advocate. Trey for Lance you. gonna go stupid. I, <laughs> <laughs> let me advocate a little bit for it though, because I understand Burner's thinking here. We have you have a receiver who you know, he should have won earlier, but didn't. And it's the kind of a situation, it's not like the C.D. Lamb. Like, but I could see Minnesota being like, hey, maybe we don't have our quarterback situation figured out, but when we do figure it out, whoever it is, they're going to have a plethora of weapons. So I, I get the logic. I wouldn't have made the pick, but I get the logic. I, I, love, I love that after it. All right, next pick. Who we got? Who we got a oh, twelve. I got a. Uh, oh yeah. I got a uh, Bo Nix. Oh yeah. Bo Nix. Let's ride. Uh, I looked at into hell. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at this pick and I said, you know what? I'm not gonna have another chance to get a quarterback that's actually worth starting anything. Um, JJ McCarthy. Ew, gross. Who? Spencer Rattler? No, nah, Spencer Rattler's crazy. Spencer Rattler? Spencer... Ward? Listen, 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 listen. Hey, oh, oh. Ken Ward actually... Oh, 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 oh. So, before, before, before we get go any further, Cam Ward, I have not watched any 23, 23 tape on yet, so pause on that one. Spencer Rattler, I am okay taking at the back of the second, the very back, like, 28 through 32, early third. I'm fine, with Spencer Rattler. Oh, you, but you know what type of round, um, you know what type of year this is going to be. We're going to see a nasty reach. Oh, we're going to see some disgust. You're going to see a nasty reach. I, see some that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Like some people, some people might think a, a late second is a reach for Rattler. But my thinking for the Broncos, I was like, okay, like you've literally announced to the whole entire world, fuck Russell Wilson. So your quarterback situation is already shit. Like, there, there's no helping that. So for the Broncos, it was like, Yo, we gotta get a guy. And if we, if I had to get a guy, out of all the guys left for me it was Bo Nix because, oh lord, <laughs> that's so funny because I hate Bo Nix, but I still have to explain this. So I'm glad you sneezed. Um, I look at Bo Nix and I'm like, he's older, right? So he has the he has the mental curve, the mental capacity that, you know, a younger player might not have, you know. Justin he, Herbert he, he was, was in college when he was playing, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. We, 
listen, Senior Bowl is in a few weeks. We'll have the Bo Nix tape out. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about all of it. I'll talk about all of it. Senior but the main thing for me with Bo Nix is he has the experience. And most importantly, he is what I would call, in no respect, a system quarterback. And I think with Sean Payton calling the plays for him, I think Sean Payton would get the absolute best out of Bo Nix. You saw that when he went to Oregon, right? When he was in Auburn and he had the ability to, you know, run off script and do whatever he wanted, he looked like shit. When he got into Oregon, he got into a system when he got into a situation to where everything was more controlled, more balanced, he looked good. And I think that if he goes to Denver, I think that should be the ideal situation for him. I think that's where he, he should want to go. Because at least he'll be going to a place where he'll have a, a play caller where everything will be set on a plate for him. Bo Nix in structure, good. Bo Nix out of structure, ass. So, boo. Had to, this had is to JJ the McCarthy. On. This is JJ McCarthy right had here. Had to put a trigger on Bo Nix. No. <laughs> I'm going to give it to a ball, Noah, because this was a great pick. This was one of my favorite picks in the draft, uh, the mock draft that we did in Jerzon Newton to the Oakland Raiders. I mean, first off, I mean, this this dude's a stud. I don't know. He, he, he's a stud. Absolutely. He, he, he's amazing. He's insane. He's insanely good. He's got great hands. He's fantastic off the ball. He, he's amazing. You pair him up on that defensive line with, with, with Max Crosby at commanding all that damn attention, these dudes, his motors, are going to be running insane. It, it's just, the, again, you got Max. He's paid. You don't have to worry about that. At least one edge spot. They dropped the Tyree Wilson. He showed a little bit of promise late in the season, but we don't know. We don't know. We we go again. New year. New. We'll just chop it up take, to our first yeah. year. First Kuntz year. Is trying to take yeah. his lunch money though. Yeah. So he yeah, better true. figure it out. Yeah. Kuntz yeah. was taking his lunch money. So it, it was a little rough for Tyree Wilson, but to be expected, it was rough for him. So, but you know, maybe he figures it out. But again, I, I I think I think if you can get him to figure it out, and then you pair him up with you know Johnny Newton and, and Max Crosby, I just uh, that's insane. That that's an insane level pass rush, which you were already getting insane could. pass rush with Max alone. You get right. Newton, oh buddy, oh but if I could, that that dude was dope. Peace. That that was, that was probably my favorite pick out of this whole month. And here and then here's another one. Uh, Latu Latui Latu. They gotta get to pronounce it. Layatu Latu. Layatu Latu. Layatu Latu. Uh, Cam made He's that racist. one. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm I am. Po- I'm, I'm, just po- I'm just kidding. I'm just I was about to say, don't be racist on Polynesians. I, 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 I can't yeah, help no, you. I'm not defending you again. <laughs> I can't <laughs> help <laughs> you. <laughs> I refuse to do it. I'm not doing it. Oh, man. Uh, so we must continue and, the tradition. You're edge one, right? Yeah, we must continue the tradition of the Saints taking defensive ends. Slash edges with a first pick, so it's not a D two one. So I'm happy. I'm okay with this. It's not. A, it's not the D two one. So I don't. I don't care. I, so granted, yeah, let's yeah, get I know. I know that they they like um. We'll just call him uh, freaky man part two. <laughs> um. Oh damn. I know they like him. He had a productive year. Brian Brice, uh, Brian Brice had a pretty good year as a rookie. Um, oh, he ended he ended his rookie year with four and a half sacks. By the way. Oh, that's pretty. That's that's yeah. That's, that's fire. Production. That's a good production. Yeah, that's great production. And then you got Cam Jordan, but uh, actually, let me look this up real quick. Um, what's Cam pushing, Jordan's contract? Isn't he pushing forty? Cam yeah, no, Cam, Cam Jordan is older, but I I do want to see his contract. He'll be 35 in the summer. Yeah, he'll be 35 in the summer. Contract. Yeah, he's pushed to 40. Spot track. I, say, I don't remember nothing about his contract. I don't, I don't remember nothing. He might be. Uh, they have, he, has, he technically has one more year. Yeah, I'm just saying, yeah, he's expiring. But if they wanted to move off of him. New Orleans. This makes too yeah, much they, sense for if they wanted to move off him, they could move off him. Yeah, he signed a two-year deal not too long ago. I think it says. Definitely, because uh, lots of lots of can be like a like a day one, like you know, yeah, lead so, pass rusher for you. So, so yeah, that was that was the way I was going because you know, and plus 
don't be shocked if he did something like take a pay cut or if he didn't get cut. Because for whatever reason, um, the Saints just always find a way to get under the cap, even <laughs> though they're severely over. They are, they are severely over every year, and somehow they manage to be way under the cap. It's yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of terrifying, but yeah, I, I went with that because you know Cam Cam Jordan's getting a little bit older. You don't know if you're really going to end up letting him stay, or if he takes a pay cut, or if he doesn't, you just cut him. But even if he does stay, you know, young blood could come in there with take more snaps. Cam Jordan could take less snaps, and you could use him more on a specialized role. I like uh, Leatu Latu because. He has a plethora of ways to beat you. He has a lot of ways to beat you coming off that edge. And then, hell, even if you want to throw him in coverage, he's, he's looked pretty decent in coverage at times. It's, it's insane. So in a division in a division like this, you always want to be able to get pressure. I mean, the Falcons have a pretty solid O-line. The Buccaneers, it's, it's starting to come there, but you got Tristan Wurst. And then, as for right now, the the Panthers are in shambles. So, <laughs> keep them once you get a I like that. To the to the pick that might surprise some, but probably might be one of the best fits in this class. Like, Brock Brock only good pick, by the way. Only outstanding good pick. player. Only, only. <laughs> His only good pick. <laughs> what do you mean, bro? He got some picks down the line that's gonna change man. the game. <laughs> Y'all are bullies, man. You got Gosh. some picks down the line that's gonna change the game, bro. Chill, bro. I need to know this. I need to know this. Humphrey, why? Why the debate exist? <laughs> oh, I remember that. To this debate. So, so, that's all I was gonna really get into. This is a really short one. <laughs> yeah, that's all I was gonna say. It's really short. Like, well, Ali Cox sucks. Um, you have a young quarterback who, if not for a what was it, messed up shoulder? Uh, nah, twenty two Woods been, would be crazy. Would have oh been, would have been, uh, would have been, a, have been a, in the offensive rookie of the year conversation. You still have Michael Pittman, I think, for at least another year, or maybe he's for yeah, uh, contract year. But I'm, I'm a hundred percent certain he's coming back. He just, he just had an amazing year. There's no reason he shouldn't. Absolutely. Young, young Josh Downs. After Gardner so Minshew was throwing him hospital balls, hospital balls. Jesus yeah. Christ, he young Josh, like young Dan. Josh. Dan. Yeah, young young Josh Downs, uh, who had a had a solid rookie year. So you continue to add, you know, more offensive talent for oh. your young quarterback in Brock Bowers. Friday, 16. Ooh, Jared Burst. That's right, Jared Burst. Yeah, that's a good one, too. Yeah. Jared Burst. Again, that's oh, my... see, that's me. I forgot. Yeah, I, said, I was about to say, yeah. I didn't make you. I said, it ain't me. It's, I'm pretty sure it's you. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know I'm why. Glad I, you guess made I, got, it, I guess I got so excited about uh, Brock Bowers. I forgot I made it. Yeah. Uh, out of all my picks. daydreaming about men. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. <laughs> 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 oh man, Maya's gonna see she's gonna be like, uh, Artie, do we need to have a talk? <laughs> she can't, she, but she's gonna be like, So, what were you thinking about there? What were you thinking about? Who were you thinking about there? Oh lord, who was this Brock? <laughs> oh lord, it was, it was Brock. <laughs> anyway, uh, Jed verse. One of the best players in this class. One of my favorite players that we watched over the summer for summer scouting. My um, edge two. Yeah, Dalen's edge two. My edge two as well. I think I think that Jared Verse really this is not only just a good fit for talent, but this is a good fit for scheme. When you think of Seattle, when you think of their rushers, you think of their passers, you think of tough guys, strong guys, guys that can win with you know a tough arsenal of moves. Um, you know, I win with power, you know, I win with finesse. And Jared Verse, out of all the rushers. He's the best of both, like Dylan said. Like he's the guy who's athletic enough to beat you with athleticism. He also got the technique. He also got the pass rush tools. He's also got the he's also got the uh, strength to just be able to bully you and beat you time and time again and leave you speechless afterwards. So Jared Verse going to Seattle, a team that needs pass rush help badly, outside of Daryl Taylor, you know, outside of uh, Nuosu, they they don't really have that much pass rush outside. Yeah. 
That's I, it's a it's a solid contract, three year, forty five mil. He, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, another one of my Dalen. All I love all Dalen's picks. Dalen's excellent, but this pick was really really good. So go ahead and just tell the people about J.C. Latham and why he's going to fit in Jacksonville. I mean, Mr. J.C. Latham, I mean, look, man, he a big boy, 6'6", 3, I think 330, 350, something. 60. Yeah, somewhere 60, in that range. Bro. He, yeah, he oh gained 30 He's just huge. Oh, my yeah, Lord. He's yeah. huge. He's just huge. But um, Jaguars, Jaguars last year, they that offense line is bad. It's, it's, it's awful. It's absolutely awful. Um. They struggled in in, in in pass pro. They struggled uh, run blocking. You know, ETN went off like early in the season, but then afterwards it was just it was rough. Um, Anton Harrison's a decent building block. They'll probably slide him over to the left. Um, keep Latham at the right tackle. You got two two uh, two towers now. Um, Latham helps improve your run blocking, especially because again he's he's big as hell, strong as hell. That that dude is man, that dude's fantastic. Um. Again, my I mean, my comp for him would be. I mean, he's this year's Tyler Smith in terms of like just a big dude. Mm-hmm. He look, you know, maybe a little little raw on the technique, but nothing crazy. Not like crazy raw, but he he can play day one. He might he might get a little you know a little too many penalties for your liking, but he's that's what I was just about to ask you about how do you think about the penalties? Yeah, uh, honestly, most most of the penalties are pretty correctable. I mean, he had a bunch of. I think he he made the struggle with like false starts and stuff. So. Exactly. Yeah, he made yeah. the struggle with a lot of a lot of pre snap stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. something that you can correct. You know, other than that, I, I I I think he'll be fine. He's a fine fit for Jacksonville. Again, they need an offensive line, so shit. <laughs> they they need it. They need it horrendously. Get yourself your second right, tire and, and, and let's go ball out. Let, let's go actually make the playoffs and not blow it. Let's just not blow it. <laughs> oh, good. all right, Cam. So your favorite team. Uh, <laughs> the big ops. The big ops. Your favorite team. You had them taking Brian Thomas Jr. and I got questions for you, buddy, because there was a receiver that I I thought would have went went better here, but I just want to hear your explanation on why you took Brian Thomas. So Brian Thomas out of LSU, six four. I, I don't think they're going to be able to keep T Higgins as much as no. as much as Joe Burrow and. And Joe Burrow were talking to the media about trying to keep him. Be like, yeah, we're going to make sure T's here. You got to pay Jamar Chase. <laughs> Shit. Jamar already let you know how he felt about T. Higgins. Oh, God. And, and Jamar is not taking yeah, a pay cut. Depends how much I'm taking. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. That is that is the realest thing I've ever heard of receivers. <laughs> that's a now, net. It is. That's a net but it's net still. Answer. That's a net it's net. still. And it's brutally insane. honest too. It's brutally honest. It's insane though. It's like I, I'm nobody saying you have to take a pay cut, but it's like brother, you can't don't say that to the media. Don't say it like that because yeah, <laughs> right. the media gonna the media gonna twist that this whole off season. So now y'all didn't make the playoffs. This whole off season gonna be like, oh, so did you really mean that? Yeah, I meant it. Um, he's doubling down. He's doubling down. Yeah. No, so yeah. It just looks bad. So, I went ahead and went with Brian Thomas because, I don't know, man. I don't like them Keon drops. I ain't going to lie to you. I don't either. Uh, Keon wasn't a receiver I was talking about, but I, I don't like it either. I think Keon Coleman, um, he's not a bad player. I still think he could have gone the first round, but I have a second on him because of the lack of nuance and route running and the focus drops. Like, there's some drops where, okay, we can admit, we can be honest on this podcast. Jordan Travis stinks. I repeat, Jordan Travis stinks. I'm watching him, but I forgot he... Just quickly here, going over Chop Robinson, uh, edge rusher from Penn State. I think for Chop... Burner made the pick, by the way. Be... Burner made the pick, by the way. So be mad. At yeah, this could have easily been a Marius man. You're for... gonna, you're gonna know, you're gonna notice all the picks that it's hard for me to explain are Burner's picks because I didn't. <laughs> this could have easily um... been a Marius <laughs> man. <laughs> could have easily been our Marius man. Easily. It could have. It also, it also could have been a corner because they corner bad. 
I thought he was gonna take the corner. I, I I swear, I swear. I was like, all right, you know what? Let's let's just take it. We literally, me and Dan literally were talking, right? We were in the chat, you guys. We were like, so this is starting the corner run, right? And then he says, no, nope, Chop Robinson, your backer. And I was like, oh my god. Okay, chop I guess I'll start the corner chop, run. Chop. <laughs> chop chop, literally. Um, yeah. I think I think quickly on Chop Robinson. I think the main thing for him is gonna be, you're a great athlete, but what else do you do as a pass rusher, man? I mean, a lot of his a lot of his wins are great. They look fantastic because of the sheer speed and you know the edge. But there were just some offensive tackles that when they got their hands on him, they just turned him around and did whatever they wanted. It was bad. I mean, there were so many reps from not even like elite top tier like linemen where he was just getting butt fucked. Like I'm just gonna be completely objective. It was bad. So for Chop. You know, I hope he has a good showing at the combine. I hope he has a good showing at his pro day. Oh, I ain't no Chop. hoping. No, he will. He, he's going to test out something nasty at the combine. Yeah, Penn State yeah, that's what always I'm saying. has. Like, I, like I, for, for his draft stock's freak. sake, I hope that he ascends because that tape is going to have a no, lot of No, because I don't like, get it. I don't know why. Like. Let's get to, let's get to the, the favorite, my yeah. favorite four, yeah, let's move four on. picks of this draft. Uh, Tampa Bay gets their next cornerback one in Nate Wiggins here. Uh, Dalen's cornerback one. My cornerback one, Nate Wiggins, is simply outstanding. He's the next film session that's going to come out on the channel. Um, everything you would want in a simply put man-to-man style corner. Everything you'd want. The build, the length, the athleticism, the ball skills, the technique, everything. Nate Wiggins is just him as far as what you look for in a cornerback in today's one of that. Can't forget simply hustle. Put. Hey man, I, I still forget what game it was, but he hawked dude down back. He had two. He hawked yeah, he down. Yeah, he got two. Um, I was gonna say, yeah, I remember I went back and I watched the it. He North Carolina one, yeah, and North I think Carolina. it was mm-hmm. Florida. Was it Florida State? I think, was, I, I think it was Florida State. I think it was. It was Florida State. They're both. They're literally both the same both play. The he, same. Just, he just he comes he just, out of nowhere. I was like, what the? I'm like. I just I remember because I was watching North Carolina game and I see him I'm like oh he finna score and then I just see Orange flashing the ball out like it's crazy hey. oh yeah but I'm gonna hand it off to the Dalen here because the run continues with Kool Aid McKinstry going to Arizona uh as we said the run continues we got you know Kool Aid going to the uh going to the Cardinals um I mean the 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 cornerback room for them has already kind of been shambles it, it just it just is. It, uh, Gannon being a defensive guy, I, I assume he wants to go get, you know, a corner that he feels like he can leave out on the island by themselves. You know, he can match up with anybody man to man wise. Um Gannon plays a different a bunch of varieties of coverages, but I, Gannon showed to be a, a quality coach. So I assume he's gonna take him, you know, play him towards his strengths while also, you know, teaching him the, you know, the 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 trick coverages and stuff that Gannon likes to run and the mix ups. But I mean, go ahead and secure yourself to a, a CB1 and start building your defense. That is really as simple as that. And then the run continues more with Terry on Arnold uh, joining the Los Angeles Rams. Game. Bike the bike. Yeah, I think uh, I think the Rams want to go ahead and just get them a corner with some high pedigree um, after they just got rid of one. Because... <laughs> um, <laughs> What do you mean? They have a uh, homeboy from Georgia. What Stop are you talking about? right now. Clemson legend Darion Kendrick? What Stop do you mean? right now. No. <laughs> <laughs> Darion Kendrick one of the worst players. I don't even want to think about it. But, you know, cause I'm, trying to, I'm really trying to think about all their corners. I know it's him. Weatherspoon. Akello. Oh yeah, I Keller Willispoon and then the Kobe, uh, the Kobe Durant. Yeah, Keller Willispoon was actually he actually had a good year. Very... I should say, like for majority of the year, he really did. He was like he was like PFF like CB one or two. It was crazy. Yeah, nah, he he's been playing good. Um, because even when he was like the latter half of last year when he was on uh, Pittsburgh, he was playing pretty solid. Yeah, he's you know he's he's been trying to fight back ever since the Skyly Miller incident. Um, oh man. <laughs> but going back, going into the pick, Terry Arnold is a guy who you, I mean the, the the Rams love to play man. It's a guy you could definitely play man with, and he's he's gonna be able to take care of you at the at the point of attack while you send 
Kobe Turner and Aaron Donald to just destroy y'all. The you want to talk about, yeah, line. yeah. Then, then, like I said, him and Kool Aid are the hip pocket corners. Them, hey, they got all the athleticism in the world to stick with anybody. I don't, exactly. I don't care. <laughs> Who's who is he? So we did this mock uh, uh, January 9th, and it's January 10th as of we're recording right now. So just forget this pick. But what no, I'll say uh, about Denzel Burke in, in regards of Burner. Got to wing it, bro. We can't do <laughs> this. We got to wing it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Not, yeah, that's we gotta win. That's you. I'm not taking that. That's you. We gotta win it. We gotta make a new pick, bro. We gotta make a new pick now. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Give me who pick, bro. What you oh, brother. Way? Honestly, if you want, hey, just we can, there. You can just... Bro, we can't. Ex- we can't explain a dude who's who's literally doing his his early morning workouts right now. That's no. <laughs> But you, you can, what, 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 I, what do I, where do I go with Pittsburgh here? I mean, you can honestly um, just say TJ Tampa and keep it pushing. If you really want TJ to, Tampa, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. TJ, corner, Tampa. TJ Tampa, TJ Tampa, cornerback from Iowa State, uh, six times. All right, yeah, you know what? That I'm gonna talk about Lynn Taylor now. No, no, I'm not talking about Lynn. Let's go home, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go home. <laughs> Let's go home because, uh, anyway, as we're closing out our. Mock draft 1.0 here from Thomas. Big Art. boy, uh, Leonard Third. Taylor, big boy, uh, to the Miami Dolphins. He gets to stay in the local area. Jerzon Newton, but just think of him as a little more slimmer and a little more flexible in his move. That's what you get in Leonard Taylor. Really, really, really good job that he does when it comes to attacking the passer, but he's also very underrated in how he handles business in the run game. I think he's slippery. I love the way he uses that cross chop move on those uh, offensive guards. He's really good at that. And overall, when you look at Miami, Christian Wilkins is getting older, and He's it's a, a position contract year too. Contract here as well. So I'm looking at it like, and I'm like, Leonard Taylor, could he potentially uh, replace that type of production that Christian Wilkins produces? And I think he could. So that's why I took him here to the Miami Dolphins. Actually. And then the cornerback run continues again with a very, very special corner, Dalen. Cooper. All right. So my vision for this pick is Philly just needs some secondary help. They, they, they need it like horrendously bad. I'm tired of watching yeah, Eli Ricks, Avante Maddox. Bro, Jackson, Jackson Job is. Fire. Josh, I'm tired of watching them get cooked. Not Jackson Joe, Josh Jones, fire! Like, how dare you? They, they're all trash. Kenny Ringo's a stud. How dare you? I'm good. Tight hip ass boy. Kevin Bayard, <laughs> all pro. Oh my lord. Anyways, anyway, um, my vision for Cooper is you can honestly take him, and I view him more as like a corner safety hybrid. You could take him. You could play him at free safety. You could play him at corner. Uh, he could. He also has inside outside flexibility if he really wanted it. But I kind of view him a little bit more as you know, kind of a kind of a safety ish. So take him. Uh, oh my God, they'll have two white safeties. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, he'll take he'll take Sydney up. Brown's job. That's crazy. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, look, he, <laughs> look, he can do the inside out things. Um, I mean, look, look, you, they need somebody to guard the secondary. Plus. With that pick, it also leaves them a little bit more room to be able to, if they wanted to double up on DB, which DB is deep this year, so if they wanted to double up on DB, they can absolutely do so and not look back, which in my opinion, they need to, they need to triple up on DB and just not look back. Uh, for their third receiver weapon, no. There's no, no, no. Right. Look, look, I, I understand it, I get it. Why? Yeah. So, there's another really good pick. Dalen was on fire on this Mark Knight lookup. Um, you stole my pick, Cam. I just want to let you know that you stole my pick and I did not like it. So. Oh, yeah. I do that. Number one hater, number one hater, number one hater. You know that. Yes, sir. A. So D. tell Mitchell. the people about A.D. Adonai. He said he wants to be called Adonai. That's what he said. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I forgot. Adonai? Yeah, he wants to go by his full name, Adonai Mitchell. Government. Okay. I'm, just, I'm just making sure I'm not saying the wrong for Adonai. Adonai yeah. Mitchell out of Texas. So, yeah, easily you could you could be like, oh well, no Keon Coleman, 
like I said, I am not in love with the drops. And what have the Kansas City Chiefs been dealing Jesus with? Christ. Oh, Dude, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Can someone tell me? <laughs> drops. So I don't think they want a prospect who has a has a healthy amount of drops this past season. Mm-hmm. And I think they'll lean more towards Adonai Mitchell. Um, he has a good good frame, six four. He can still he can still add more muscle to it, of course, as well. And that'll that'll give Patrick some more help paired alongside with Rasheed Rice, who has been having a good year. And you know, um, find a way to kick Marquez Valdez Scanling out of uh, Kansas City. A stronger about Tony than 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 MBS. Only. Uh, well, he had issues since he was in Green Bay. Disgusted. Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> no, no. I'm gonna make next this one. quick so I next. can get to my next. Next. To next, next. Pick. next. I'm gonna next. make this quick. Next. I'm gonna make this next. quick. I'm gonna get my boy CJ Stroud some help. <laughs> I. <laughs> I. Out of out of out of all out of all the running backs in this class. Oh. I genuinely do think. Trey Benson or Jonathan Brooks has a chance to potentially go in the first round. But as we are reacting, we don't think it's likely. But shout out to Burner for having the balls to make a pick like that. Hey, declare oh, The crime is lit. You're going to have to lock this up. But uh, Quinn Mitchell, cornerback Toledo. Um, I'll actually let Dalen handle this because I don't really have the – I haven't watched tape on him. He's a stud. But, uh, He's up next. He can do the hard cornerback things. Um, yeah. If if first off, if you know how hard it is to play off man in the NFL. It is dumb hard to play off man. There's probably only like four cornerbacks that can consistently play off man. Trayvon Diggs, Jalen Ramsey, which Jalen Ramsey can do anything that he wants to do. Jair Alexander, it's pretty much it. There's not really very many corners that can consistently play off man at the elite level. Um Quentin Mitchell can play off man like crazy. So he can play off man, he can play cover three, and the Lions run a ton of freaking man anyway. I don't know why, because Cam Sutton is trash. Stop being Pure that. garbage. Cam Sutton Pure is garbage. garbage. I don't know why they signed him. Pure garbage. Cam Sutton is garbage. So get yourselves a get yourselves a corner that can actually play man to man. He's not oh so well in press, but again, he can play off man. And that's really all that matters. We could teach him the easy ones. We could teach him easy press man coverages. We can come to the league and learn that. If I don't have to teach you how to play off man, I'll draft you. I'll easily draft you. So, okay. Let Quinion Mitchell cook. That that brother's going to be special. He He's up next. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. He's up next. Speaking of up next, uh, talk about Tyler Newbin, safety from Minnesota. Look, man. Out of, out of all the safeties in this class, which we're going to have two go back to that, I was most impressed with Newbin because he was so good at some things I wouldn't expect. Dave. Like, just tell the people about how good of a player Charlie Newbin is, why he's a perfect fit for Buffalo. I mean, again, what Buffalo likes to do with their safeties is they love to play their safeties in multiple fashions. They love to play them. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they'll, they'll, they'll play them deep. Sometimes they'll play them center field. Sometimes they'll play them in the box. And – you know, Buffalo loves to disguise coverages a lot, and that's what Newbin did in Minnesota is he played a lot single high. He played in the box. He, I mean, he can he can dang their line up anywhere on the back end of that defense, and he's he's in full control and command. He's a great tackler. He's, he's, he's good enough. He's got good enough functional athleticism to be in the middle and work fine. He can do the split field things. Only question him maybe being in the nickel as a, as a, like, as like nickel, like manned up, but he could play the nickel like in zone coverages. Doesn't matter because Buffalo runs a ton of zone anyway. So, I mean, to me, the, the, I mean, the, 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 the pick, the pick fits itself. On top of that, you know, Hyde and Boyer, they're both old as hell. They're both like 33, 32, 34. Michael Hyde old. being like in his prime in like 2016. Like they, they're they old. Yeah. They're, they're like yeah, both they're of them. Both on expiry. I say both contract. I think are expiring contracts and they're old. And I thought Poyer was going to leave because I thought I seen somewhere Poyer was supposed to go to Miami but he ended up going back to Buffalo or something like that. I don't know. But you, you I mean you might as well go ahead and get you a, a back end player. They need it. They need it. They they need a back end player as well. They just they need it. So, hey. 
Tyler Newman it is. Speaking of, speaking of back-end players, this, this pick shocked me, Cam. <laughs> the pick that you made, Cam, on Cam shocked me. But at the end of the day, what great value, right? Like, Cam Kitchens is a stud. Cam Kitchens is a pure stud. Just talk about how good Cam Kitchens is and how this could be, like, the safety position could be a sneaky need for Dallas upcoming next year. I mean, the the way I was going, looking at it was, yes, our Marius Mims is still here. Um, I definitely did think about that. I'd be remiss to say I didn't. But y'all are going to be letting J. Ron Curse walk. Fuck Clemson. Um, <laughs> y'all going to be letting him walk. And I was just looking at it. I was like, well, why not just keep adding to that defense? I mean, you guys have a really good defense already. Let's, let's, let's pair him. Let's pair him up with another stud safety. And why not? Why not get Cam Kitchen? Like I go lie when um when Dalen was picking, I I for sure thought he was gonna mock Cam to um to Buffalo. Definitely thought that's that's what was gonna happen, but it didn't. So I I was like, oh, well. Now nah, to be honest, I, to be honest, the the pick in safety thing or newbie can do the back end things. He can do the split things. He's better in zone. Kitchens is better as a single high man to man kind of ordeal where he's on the back. He going to guard left hash, right hash, you know, numbers and numbers. He going to run on, at, at the back. So, Cam nuts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. <sighs> well, uh, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. No, uh, matter, <laughs> fact, no matter of fact, don't even do it. Don't even do it. If, if this is the reason why you don't want to do it, it's okay. I get it. I understand. Don't even. Stinky. Stinky, stinky, stinky. stinky. To sum it uh, up, to sum it Lamar up, Drake we were not fans not of this pick. He was, he's not here. This is our Marius Mims. This is our Marius Mims. This is our Marius. <laughs> <sighs> the next pick was Kamari Lasseter, uh, cornerback from Georgia. Jalen, I'm not even going to catch you, bro. Out of all the cornerbacks that I watched um, this for this um, draft class, Kamari Lasseter was going to shock me the most. Like I, I, did, I wasn't aware of him um, last year. So when I caught on the tape and saw the things that he did to Xavier Leggett, like, it wasn't even funny. It wasn't fair. Like, Xavier Leggett is 6'3", 220. Go Spurs, by the way. And Kamari Laster put him on his ass. I mean, like, I mean. He was he was bullying uh, Xavier Leggett. I mean, so. Lasseter, Lasseter ain't no, he ain't no B-word. He, 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 he's one of those, he I, I, I want to get up in your face. He he's a like straight six, thug. And I'm he likes 6'2", as well. Like, he's crazy. Last one's crazy. Yeah, like, despite him, where, despite him being, hmm, really, but despite him being, despite him being relatively ish undersized. I mean, he's not undersized in my opinion. He's like six foot one eighty. He's he's got the size. Yeah. You know how people be. If you're not six two two thousand pounds and you're not in a last one can ball. He he's an absolute bully. He's a he, he's physical as hell. He wants to get up in your face and press you and tackle and. Well, that's going to conclude um, episode two of 100 Benson. Yards in Context. We're not over the Trey Benson pick. We're not over the Devon Jerry Sweat pick. Whatever Benson. pick you didn't like, listen, here's, here, here's what I want, because we, we need more engagement in our comments. Oh, I have at Whatever least one or two. you did not like, comment two. it in the comments for us. Whatever pick you hate, comment in the comments you hate it and why. We would love it. We would love it. Oh my we know God. who most of the picks are going to be from. Yeah, I know. I probably got like one or two. I'll take that pick. I, I got one, probably. That's it. Maybe maybe but, two, but other than that, I don't know. But <sighs> Tafondre Sweat did Trey Benson. <laughs> like, come on, man. So, at least four got No, no, <laughs> no. That pick makes sense. It makes sense. <laughs> <sighs> You gotta have pass catchers. Pass catchers are oh, more important than linemen. You are right. Fuck we should have. We should have. We should have mocked Vlad McConkey to um Fuck Houston. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? Yeah, Joe, Joe you know Burrow, what? Joe Burrow Super Bowl. That's all I gotta say. Joe Burrow Super. Bowl. You know what? Hey. It's, it's you know what you know what. 
I'm, I'm gonna allow that. I'm gonna allow that. Since I made an outrageous comment about Talise, I'm allowed. I mean, no, but um, no, nah, seriously, that's gonna conclude uh episode two of a hundred yards in context. Um, please consider you know liking the video, subscribing to the channel for all the YouTube viewers, for all the people that are gonna listen to this in audio format. You know, please, 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 please. We are young. We are new to this podcast, and we still know what the fuck we're doing. But please rate us five stars. Five, 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 five stars, please. Five stars. Five stars. We're not gonna get five stars as soon as they hear that Trey Benson went first round. We're not. Yeah, nah, that's you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, man, they're gonna click off the pod. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're, gonna, they're gonna have a two. We're gonna have a two second retention rate. <laughs> nah, Trey Benson is insane. This is nasty. Oh, well, that's gonna do it, man. Uh, next time we will get on here. We're probably going to start doing, like, our unit breakdowns, like, offensive unit, defensive unit. Get to some of that so we can get you guys, you know, what really accustomed to. Oh, that's, uh, that's uh, January 29th. So we got some time. Got some oh, time. okay. Because yeah. I'm about to see, I got to remember, I got to watch those practices. Mm. Ooh. Oh, I yeah. Forgot. Right. I forgot. Yeah, they do be. We got to we gotta do, like, a senior bowl preview, like, guys. Got you, because there are some, there, like, like I said in the beginning of the show, like there is some real talent in this class. We gotta check like, the other ball games too, because sometimes they get, um, you know, they can they can get asked to come to the senior bowl too. Yeah, that's true. Oh, the Shrine Bowl guys, I know Leonard Taylor Shrine got bowl. asked to the Shrine Bowl. I know, um, who else? I can't think of anyone top of my head, but the Shrine Bowl did have a couple guys. So I mean, yeah, I think Cam Ward is there too. In the shrine on East West Shrine, I think. Yeah, he is. He is. He is. So, we'll get we'll get into we'll get into all of that. But that's gonna wrap this episode up.